Hello, welcome to the Sashiko live streaming on Thursday night. Um, this is Atsushi. Phew. Um, let me cat. Let me check the audio first. Oh, there we go. That's good. Ah. I hope you are having a good Thursday night. It is getting cold here again. It was kind of snowing a little bit, and I hope that there's going to be some school tomorrow. Um, this is the live streaming where I stitch Sashiko while doing... Sorry. This is the live streaming where I talk about Sashiko while doing the Sashiko stitching without any hiding or editing or modification. So I hope that this is going to be a place for you to stitch together or gather together. And like, you know, you can learn that as if you're learning it from your parents, grandparents, friends and such. And so this is not a tutorial, this is not a webinar, this is not a lecture, so I'm not going to answer any questions related to the technical things. It's like, you know, teach me how to do the sashiko is not going to be the question I will uh, I will answer today. Uh, so it, please, if you have any question, if you have any request, please focus on that more like a cultural side of the sashiko story. Okay, a few announcements, a few announcements. I will not of the live streaming next Thursday, which is 22nd. Uh, February 22nd, I will not have the live streaming um, because I will be in Raleigh, New North Carolina for the QuiltCon. And technically speaking, I am free that time after the workshop, preparing for the next workshop. Um, but you know, it's, it's better to not to have it, to rest it. So uh, I'm not going to have it next week. After that, I will go back to the regular routine, so I should be able to keep offering the live live streaming as well. And I think that's about. Oh, there's one. I have not started sending the way, um, invitation for the Sashiko Japan tour um, because I have been a little bit busy, but. I will start doing that after QuiltCon. I will need to finalize that sooner or later. So if you are inter in, interested in learning what is the Sashiko Japan Tour, uh, there's a link to be on the wait list. And there's no need for the commitment for the waiting list. So please check that from the uh, description area. There are tons of information there, so please check that des description area if you are new to this live streaming. And today I brought some topics, issue of not acknowledging the upstream and, and also, well, I had a little into interesting comment, negative feedback. And, you know, as I speak up, as I share many, many, many stories, um, of course, it is very, very natural to have the negative feedback. I don't, I'm not hallucinating that I will get only positive feedback. Many, many people give me the negative feedback and it is the nature of the internet. Um, but there are, I found one comment describing or even articulating why I keep saying that the importance of acknowledging the upstream. The comment exactly describe the issue and possible destroy possible corruption of the culture by not being mindful to acknowledge it. So I will share that comment. At the same time, I will reply to the question that I got from uh, one of the viewers here. So <clears throat> I will go back to the stitching on the Asanoha patterns. I still have not found that the <laughs> box of the Asanoha patterns yet. I I'm preparing everything for the QuiltCon, and after the QuiltCon, I should be able to clean a lot of stuff, so I should be able to look for that. But until that, I will go back to the regular stitching, and, and just in case, just in case, I will start stitching the other asano pattern. All right, let's go back to the stitching. Just a second, where is that? Yes, I hope that audio is okay. Uh, I forgot the water. 
think I can do without the water. Well, actually, I'll be I'll be right back. Sorry. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> well, actually, before, well, let me just start stitching a little bit. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for the confirming that. Oh, this is your probably first live streaming. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoy it. Stitching time together. So the question, I got a question, three questions last week, and it was very, very good questions. And I will, I answered a question to the one question, and I left two questions unanswered. So I would like to tackle to one question today. And it is, it is going to explain a lot of Japanese sashiko. So, and I will talk about the negative feedback I received, which articulate the reason I keep saying that why it is so important to acknowledge the upstream. Nice to hear your talk last night at Peaceful Night. Oh, that's nice. Thank you so much for coming and coming back here too. Yeah, this live streaming is more casual <laughs> i don't have any script uh, when i do the lecture or talk i usually have a very 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 uh, structured script i talk as if there is no script but i prepare i practice that uh, so many times before the actual lecture so it's more like a performance or play uh, there's a script on that but this one this live streaming, I do not have any script. I do not have any like preparation for that to talk about. So, but I think it's it's a very important to have that kind of moment because then I can be quite honest. I don't have time to modify or even cover up or pretend that I'm being somebody else. So. This live streaming is more, <laughs> more honest for that matter, I guess. Nothing wrong with having a casual platform along with your more structured platform. Yeah, yeah, so this is, this is, um, this is more like a, anti-thesis? I wouldn't say anti-thesis, but there's so many Sashiko answers which has been modified. Like, I wonder how many teachers, Sashiko teachers, actually stitch. I mean, I'm not stitching as much as I wish. And there are so many people who stitch more than I do, and they are getting much, much better. So I sometimes feel jealous on that. At the same time, um, if I stop stitching, I believe that I should be also stop, stop teaching. At the same time, you know, those tutorials, those class, online class, those are kind of modified version. You can always edit anything on the internet or on the computers. You can even change what you say completely after making a video. So I thought that this was more nice archives for the future 
So if somebody wants to learn the sashiko, Japanese sashiko, the way we used to learn, I think this is a really good format to leave. Okay, so I'll just uh, come up with one questions. Oops, it's not that good. Too. I hope you can see that. So it is about, oops, just a second, okay, I'm sorry. It is about dualism. Uh, she would be interested in knowing more about dualism. I, you, I've mentioned it a couple of times, if I remember, if she remembers correctly, um, in the context of Sashiko introduced in English is not wrong, blah, 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 but insufficient. And I assume non-dualism is related to the Sashiko culture being a more collectivism versus the individualist, individualism. Uh, where does this touch Sashiko introduced in English besides the hubris of claiming to be the ultimate? Uh, does Sashiko have things to teach Western about non-dualism? That's a good point. Does Sashiko have things to teach Westerners about non-dualism? How does one evaluate something if there's no absolute right or wrong? That's a very good question too. Or is it kind of judgment or good, bad, good, bad, right, wrong? Not necessary. And third paragraph, I'm not gonna uh, read it here because it's more like the added addition. So I would like to talk about dualism and there's no right and wrong. You may believe you may you may not believe that, but there are no as I say all the time, there are no right or wrong in Sashiko at all. However <laughs> however, I am not saying that they the answer or right or wrong does not exist. It exists in one region. If we talk about the whole picture of Sashiko, there is no right or wrong. In fact, everything is right. Everything is correct. Uh, when we look at the very, very, very small part of Sashiko in small area, then there are rules. There are right and wrong. So it does exist. Um, but at the same time, it, that's something where the dualism kicks in. Uh, one can evaluate something based on very, very specific rules. At the same time, they know that it does not apply to the bigger picture. Um, for example, there is a rule for my sashiko, our sashiko. We have rules. We have a right and wrong. At the same time, if I judge somebody's teaching based on my rule, um, in the Western culture, that is going to be the abs like the people who has more power, more capital, more uh, privilege, more energy, more voice, more like the people who has more tend to decide what is right or wrong. And <clears throat> because Japanese are living in non-dualism society, we do live outside of the absolute answer so there are answers they are right and wrong but there are no absolute right or wrong we kind of assume that they are outside of the <laughs> dualism i hope that it makes sense it might not make sense i will keep going that again it is quite difficult to explain that <laughs> and that, that's why I keep saying that dualism is one challenge for us to explain what Sashiko is. Um, but one thing I would like to say is that the, the rule you can find, the right, right Sashiko, wrong Sashiko you can find on the internet, is true at some point, at some place, for some Sashiko, but that's not... Um, applying to all of the sashiko or the whole picture of sashiko or even the sashiko we practice the dualism <laughs> dualism is if i understand dualism correct correctly it is 
A or B? A or B, right? And if A is right or justified or proven right, then B is going to be sort of wrong or inaccurate or proven to be not right, bad, like wrong. So if it's good, if A is good, B is bad. If A is if A is yin and B is yang, that kind of the comparison there, A or B, and the non-dualism in this context in for the Japanese people are not in between. So many people misunderstand that when I say non-dualism, it's between A and B. So it's more like they think that it is more like making the answer unclear or putting some blur over the answers so we don't articulate the answer and that that can happen but what i'm trying to say is that they are outside of those these a and b so they might be c somewhere else so that A and B exist, that dualism ex exists in my area. However, we know that, and we should actually know that, everybody know that there should be some answers or some different things outside of this realm. Um, I think this is more like the, the, um, the religion, the Christianity or that um, the religion believe in absolute one God. Um, that is, of course, affecting the mindset or belief or philosophy. We do not, the most of the, the not most, but the majority of Japanese people do not follow that absolute God. So, that's, that's really, re that, that concept is leading to the fact that I keep saying that Sashiko introduced in English is not wrong, but insufficient. They are only talking about one part of Sashiko. Let's say that one type of pizza with the very, very specific topping, and then they define that as the answer by defining the other sashiko or anything else as the wrong sashiko or incorrect. And why do they have like right? Or why do they, or like, why, why can they define that? Well, because they have a power, because they have some privilege, they have enough things to do it. Connection is one of the things. <coughs> it is very interesting and difficult. And it is probably connected to the, um, the collectivism and also the individualism. We do have to live in the collectivism so if one define the right and wrong that person has to be somebody who is already in the power we cannot really have the personal answer for that so to summarize then it's basically that they may be one way of doing sashiko in one area or and another way in another region of japan Neither are wrong at all, but they are also no gatekeeping either. That is right. That, that's, that's correct. Gatekeeping is basically keeping others from doing it, participating in something because of specific opinion, trying to dedicate what they believe is right or wrong. Yes, so I'm not gatekeeping for that. I am trying to share the Sashiko we practice over decades or even century. And unfortunately, not unfortunately, interestingly, none of none of the Sashiko books written in English explain what I teach, which which I kind of now call it core in essence. Um, but none of them teach that. Why? Because we they did not come to our place to learn what Sashiko is. They found Sashiko in Japan, and they probably have. I hope. I hope sincerely hope that they do have teachers at least but let's say that they learn sashiko from somebody in japan or some japanese person and then they define they learn that that's the answer 
uh, without imagining that there might be other type of sashiko, they become teacher or they become authorities. And as a result, some of the sashikos are not introduced. If, if they publish books, if they teach without specific Japanese teacher, then that is perfectly uh, another issue. <laughs> That's completely another issue. So that probably can be the cultural appropriation issues. We can kind of move to that. <laughs> like if they claim that they know about Sashiko without really specific teacher or specific resources for that matter, well, then that's, you know, that's even worse than... <laughs> that's not even like a misunderstanding. That's a really deliberately changing the culture. So... Are Japanese religions generally not... Feast... Feast... Yeah, I cannot, I cannot say that word. The... Theistic? No God. Um, that deities, whether one or several. Um, uh, I am not very good at talking about the religions because I'm not really good at that. But um, animism is one one thing to describe that theistic, theistic. Theistic? Theistic. Just let me look up that word just in case that I may not understand it. Theistic. Involving a relating of belief. Um, no, 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 no. It, it's a good word. I am learning English, so, you know, my daughter is saying that, well, daddy, it's okay that you don't speak English well. You're not American. You're Japanese, so you can speak Japanese, so that's good. So if you are not sure about English word, ask me as American. So, yeah, so I, I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Any new word is good to go. I'm not... I used to probably care about my English when I was in the college. I wanted to improve it. I wanted to be get better. I wanted to have a better pronunciation and, 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 you know, better, better, better. At the same time, when I am this age, it's not the pronunciation or it's not the language level that makes difference. So no matter how bad English that I speak, the co if the content is somewhat interesting, people try to listen. And that's what matters. Like, of course, one speaker like me, foreign speakers, are supposed to try their best to pr to speak natural language. At the same time, it is kind of meaningless or even nonsense for that matter to only focus on the pronunciation unless their goal is to be the, like, you know, some pa, <laughs> some like speech pathologist or speech, you know, speech teachers. Um, because I'm not trying to be the English teacher, um, I don't have to be so particular about my English. So when I don't know, I say I don't know, so don't worry about it. So going back to the conversation, the we do, um, the God is the one <laughs> difficult things to define. What is God? What is G-O-D? I think it, the best way to describe is something great, something above human, something above us, some, like, you know, something great, right, I guess. Um, 
if we are kind of implying that God is something we cannot visualize, we cannot see physically, yes, we do. Japanese Shinto believes that something similar to that. But if I were to translate that to the English, instead of saying God, I would use the word spirit. And that's going to connect to the animism. So we believe that things, everything, has the spirit in it. Even the needles that I'm using right now, the fabric I'm using right now, the symbol I'm using right now, they have somewhat spirit somewhere. At the same time, it's not. Now, that's a, that, this is completely another serious debate, discussion. But some people, including myself, believe that Shinto is not really the religion. <laughs> it is more like a, a ritual? Custom ritual? There's no such a thing as... Um, I don't know if we call Bible. We don't really have the way of <laughs> the way of being admitted to the you know the forgiven. For forgiveness is one of the very important factor in the religion. Religions, you know, we are kind of we carry the sin, so we have to be. We like to get the way to be forgiven. And there's, you know, the, the, their step to be, do that. In Shinto, we do have a concept of kind of doing a bad thing. We call kegare. Kegare is like a dirt. And that can be spiritual dirt. At the same time, the way of purification is quite simple. You just wash it. There's no, like, you don't, there's no ceremony. There's no, like, assignment that they have to do. You just go and wash it, and then you will purify it. So, that is quite interesting, too. Most of what you see as Christian in America is a modern thing, not... Well, I, I, I'm aware of that, so I do not want to talk about religion too much because I am not really qualified to talk about. Um, but... <laughs> Dennis, 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 that's a pretty strong word. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I should, I, I don't know if I should read it out. I mean, it's a great comment, but um, I don't want somebody to clip it, but it is, probably it is. And that is, that is why I dislike the word Zen or Wabi Sabi to connect it to Sashiko. Like, I, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what the people are thinking of to use those words. Uh, I don't know if they understand what Zen is, or I don't know if they have like a family as a Zen monk. I, I, you know, I don't know their background, so I cannot really accuse them for that. But as long as I know, as long as far as I know, Zen and Sashiko's are opposite, very, very opposite. Sashiko can bring us the moment of Zen, but the principle itself is very, very, very opposite. So for me, it's simply the marketing. Marketing is... <laughs> Whew. Wow, thank you so much for the comment. Um, I will calm down a little bit. <laughs> Dennis, you can, you can speak out as much as you want. I uh, just don't read out some of the comment that <laughs> it might be dangerous. And we have to define what is marketing, right? Right? Like, what is marketing? It's like a business major... Anybody went to the marketing, I mean, anybody went to the marketing major or MBA for that matter to learn what marketing is? Um, 
I went to the business. Like, I, I got a BA business at the mission. I don't know. Like, I, I got a bachelor degree from business, but, you know, business undergrad is pretty much drinking and partying. So I don't really remember anything that I... I, I believe that I passed a lot of classes. I probably took the marketing class, but I... I literally don't remember anything. <laughs> I mean, MBA is probably different. But f after I became an uh, adult, I understand that marketing as transforming something so that customer feel comfortable people feel comfortable, kind of changing it so that the things are going to... Like pretty much like sell or advertise what the customer want to hear or read or understand so that there will be the market. And that goes to the little bit advanced as... Um, Broomsticks uh, wrote, marketing is the way of persuading people to agree with um, persuading to buy something, to purchase something. Uh, so it's probably the way to make trend, right? If you are in the trend of something, if you are pers persuaded that you want to buy, let's say, if you want to eat sushi for tonight, that, that is one way of the marketing. So, the goal is always kind of to sell or to make a market. To make a market. So, for me, it is a quite interesting way to modify the culture. And I think that's the another reason some people are very, very, very keen to the world or very careful to the world profit when it comes to the cultural context and it, it is you know kind of it is sad when the culture is used to in the use used in the marketing so <laughs> but yeah sashiko the trend in sashiko are not wrong trend itself is good i use the sashiko as the marketing tool as well so I'm not saying it's all bad, but it, people don't sometimes realize that it's the marketing. And that's quite sad. That's quite, I, I would say, unfair. If they know that it's the marketing, then that's okay. But not many people see that far, and that's really sad. <laughs> so, I always talk about this, but when you are trying to purchase something or learn with paying fee, like if you are about to pay something to spend money on, um, what I try to care first is what is their goal what is their destination where do they want to go do they have even goal um for me if money is the ultimate goal let's say that i'm doing sashiko so that i want to be rich i want to get private jet to go back to japan every week that's why i do sashiko if that's the goal i wouldn't choose sashiko because sashiko is not gonna bring me that much money uh, I my goal is to preserve Sashiko, and money is very very important vehicle f to bring me to the goal. Without the vehicle, I know that I won't be able to reach to the goal because the goal is kind of far. It became far. <laughs> it, it is becoming farther and farther every year. So I need a bigger vehicle right now, and like you know more fuel. But especially when it comes to the cultural context 
if, you know, check or even ask the teacher or ask the people who are selling, like, what is your goal? Like, why are you doing that? And they don't say that their goal is the money because that's probably gonna, you know, <laughs> that, that might, if they said the goal is money, I would actually trust them. It, it's very honest. <laughs> and then I probably would enjoy that. Oh, that's, that's, you know, that's great. But if they try to kind of hide what they want behind it, then, then that's something we have to really... It used to be kind of easy to sort of categorize it. Like, in order to have a business 30 years ago, you, we had to have some commitment to do that. It's not like, well, I want to be the sashiko seller, so let's make a store. It was not possible. Because you probably had to make a store, like brick and mortal store. You had to like put the advertisement on the newspaper, get the customers. So business or selling or making money was something very serious. So if one decided to open the Sashiko store, that person has to have a very, very, very strong commitment. I know some American who opened a Sashiko store in the U.S. and I very much respect them. In fact, one of them are my friend. One of them is my friend. And she's the one who told me that <laughs> you're kind of too late. Like, I'm too, kind of too late to start doing that, to speaking up. <laughs> and I kind of agree with her. Um, but she is now sort of retired. She is not doing the... She, she couldn't compete with the internet, and which I 100% agree with that. So... It is kind of sad. At the same time, it's not their fault, neither. It's not the business's fault. It's the natural way. Without doing that, it's not going to make any sense. So it is more like our responsibility as the customer or as the person who learned that to be more mindful who or what we support. Because what we choose in daily life will be the future like there's a bookstore about 45 minutes from this my town and the we used to go we still go actually we used to go to that bookstore quite often especially when my daughter was like two or three or four it's like toddler i brought her to that bookstore very often and the bookstore's name is Auto Book, O T T O Book. And that's family owned, very really local book. I do use Amazon, but book wise, I try not to buy book from Amazon because I like the bookstore. Um, but we probably won't have that many local bookstore where we can actually check the book or get a recommendation from the store owner about book because we choose more convenient way to enjoy books and it's not Amazon's fault it's our decision Sashiko is probably the same it's not gonna be that big but if one choose to be okay with the so-called right Sashiko then that's their definition of Sashiko the reason I keep speaking up is that if, if that Sashiko is like right Sashiko, wrong Sashiko, or Sashiko introduced in English is the choice of the Japanese people, I wouldn't be speaking up that much. Um, I speak up because those trends or those definitions are only in English. So it does not involve many Japanese people who, does, who do not understand English. So those who understand English can jump into this trend in English, regardless of their origin, 
either Japanese, non-Japanese, doesn't matter. Anybody who understands English can jump into this trend and then we can be part of it. But although we are talking about Japanese culture, the main, the majority of the part of this trend is not Japanese. And I think it's not fair. If the same thing happens in Japan, I might resist, but sometimes it is what it is. So that's another reason that when they claim themselves as the kind of master of Sashiko, I want them to learn English so that they can involve the other Japanese. But anyway, that's, you know, <laughs> I, I'm already doing that in English and I'm not involving as many Japanese as possible here today. And I don't know if they want to even be involved. We don't, we're the people who don't like um, argument or conflict. One of the strengths of the Japanese people is to accept. So they will accept the change especially if it's happening outside of their comfortable like their personal space so it might be complete like I, i'm in between for that not in my yeah, i am in between for that matter i'm i have a bold character japanese and for that matter western okay let's go back to dualism <laughs> so we believe in animism as the result, we kind of feel like everything is the answer for that. There is no mm, I, I'm trying to explain with the analogy with some example. Uh, but it's not only Japanese, though. Like, we do have a similar culture in the U.S. too. Like, you know, the pizza topping. You know that we have a preference on the pizza topping and there's no answer for that. Right? I mean, there's no, like, major dispute or conflict or even, like, you know, major war over what is the answer for the pizza topping. I personally like mushroom, I like onion too, but I know that some people like pineapple, which I don't. Do I want to eliminate others? I don't kind of care. I mean, if they like pineapple, that's that's good. That's not my preference, but that's good. So when everybody is on the same field with the same ability to speak up the difference becomes the matter of speaking up or preference for that matter but because it is happening where the Japanese are not involved although they're talking about Japanese culture and defining what is right or wrong without involving Japanese sashiko stitches and that is the issue. So, I may have to change that it's not actually the matter of dualism. At the same time, we as the kind of side of the customer side or learner's side, student side, we would like to get the answer so easily. We do not want to go through learning spending even more than a few hours we need one single sentence for the answer uh, you will be surprised how many <laughs> those questions i receive what is sashiko what is boro well my reply is who are you and can you describe your life your life in one sentence everything without any you know <laughs> 
without any the possibility without any possibility of misunderstanding can we describe our life in one sentence that's really tricky that's really difficult but that's the kind of question what is sashiko in one sentence for those who can define what is sashiko in one sentence they don't have that much experience that's why they can define so easily but unfortunately i can i'm trying my best to shorten my definition of sashiko and boro at the same time i have to say that that's part of it that's not a whole because it is more than that and when i say what is more it is more people ask what is the more well that is something i want to share while doing together There are various options, but none are the one true answer, and that's okay. So, we, we can understand it, but for some reason, when it comes to the um, like hobby, crafting, skill, art, technique, we kind of believe that there is the answer. But if you were from Naples pizza family, you might have an opinion about the pineapple on the pizza. Yes, yes, yes. That that is perfectly true statement. So if you're from the very, very authentic pizza family, you you should <laughs> you should have the opinion about that too. At the same time though, the family can imagine that there might be a story behind the pizza with the pineapple. I don't know why they decided to put the pineapple, which is very sweet, on top of salty food. It's not my choice. I don't like sweet, like, I, I just don't like, I'm sorry, this is my preference, but I do not like the potato chips covered with the chocolate. It does not make sense to me. Like, it's great for some of them, but I, I don't like it's, it's just personal preference. And this, if the sashiko introduced in English was purely personal preference, I wouldn't be speaking up this much. But right now, it's not really the preference, it's just eliminating the others so that they can be more, you know, they can increase their flow to their marketing. And that's sad. And it's not okay to be just sad and then let it go because i see that pineapple goes with ham and it is the hawaiian pizza see there is a stories behind it so it can be wrong for us but it can be right for somebody so it is uh, that's why it's kind of like, you know, goes to the, always my statement. We don't have to really define what it is right, what is right or wrong. I'm not asking you to define, I'm not asking, I'm not even myself defining what is right or wrong. And I'm not even gatekeeping, I'm not even hiding what I'm doing, I'm not trying to keep it secret. In fact, I'm doing the opposite, I'm sharing as much as I can. You, I, I keep saying, you can copy it. Please copy what I do right now, and if you want to teach, go ahead. Just make sure to identify the upstream, though. Because without the upstream, we will lose that whole river at some point because of the neglect we do. So if you decided to teach Sashiko based on this live streaming, go ahead. I'm not going to say, like, you know, you are violating my copyright because I don't claim that. Uh, just make sure that you say that, well, I just learned that from this live streaming. You know, you don't, you, like, they don't even have to say that they learned from me because I didn't teach them. I mean, if you learned from me from, like, online class or in-person workshop, you know, of course, I will help them. Uh, but if they just decided to learn it from here, it, it might be self-taught. They could say that they told themselves by watching this, but it's not 100% self-taught. It's more like self like they don't have a specific teachers, but they referred a lot of information available online. I don't think 
they are people who decided to go to the mountain, shutting down all the cell phone and internet, and then decided to practice sashiko for 30 years, 20, like 40 years, and then come to this wisdom by themselves, like true meaning of self-taught. <laughs> if that's the case, I want to talk to them too. So, but usually when we talk about like self-taught, like I taught myself, that means like they did not have teacher, specific teacher, they did not commit to have teacher to learn, yet they refer to many, many other things probably available for free or like less expensive. So it's, it's okay to have a self-told and I self-teach a lot of things. Um, I like doing like a DIY stuff. I try to fix the, you know, toilet pump. I watch the YouTube videos and, but I'm not going to teach how to do it. And when I do, when I teach how to do that online, I should, and I will put where it comes from. There's a plumbing YouTubers and I like that. So th that's the importance of upstream where it comes from. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of left behind. Pea pineapple goes with it. Well, I remember when it first started in the 70s. In Maine and on Cape Cod, you can get lobster on pizza. Oh, that's on. That, that, that is my taste. Yeah, th th there we go. That's good. <laughs> my brother got yelled at when he tried to order a lobster pizza somewhere else. <laughs> well, <laughs> yelled. That, that's a little... <laughs> but th th that's kind of thing. So it, it's just, it's perfectly fine. Like it, we live in the world where we can self-teach a lot of things. We don't even have to go to school. We don't have to even have a specific teachers. It's the beauty of internet. At the same time, we have to really acknowledge, we have to be very mindful that Without protecting the upstream, we will probably lose everything. We have a very, very huge river in front of us, and we can use that water almost for free and almost unlimited. But we have to know where those water comes from. If we, it is perfectly fine to just enjoy the water in front of us. But if one decided to be a little evil or more greedy to get more water to their land, and then if they decided to go upstream, and then if they change the flow to increase their profit, their you know their flow, that is changing the upstream, and then the majority of people may lose the big stream, and that is what's happening in the culture, and in this case, big stream is often defined by English. Uh, that's the power of English, I always say. English is very, 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 very strong, strong word, language. So, th that, that being said, that being said, <laughs> this is the comment I received before I get, before it gets 10 o'clock. I did not want to articulate foo, so uh, please don't go to the Domestica and find out who it was. Um, it was on the Domestica, and then I sometimes get a negative review on Domestica. Uh, it says 99% the positive review, but I get sometimes negative review. It is perfectly fine. It's it's kind of impossible to expect to have 100% positive review. Um, but this is the kind of review that I got. I would be perfectly fine if the negative review is he sucks or, you know, he doesn't, he, his English is horrible, whatever it is, negative review itself is fine. But the problem of this review is that this person thinks that the videos on YouTube are from somewhere else. Somewhere else. And yes, probably some of the YouTube videos are somewhere else. At the same time, a lot of YouTube videos are probably based on what I have shared. Uh, six or seven years ago. So yes, 
you, she or he can get probably exact same contents from the YouTube if they look through enough. At the same time, it's really like an ignorant to not to acknowledge that where it comes from. It is the it is the kind of neglect from both both side. One who is offering the information, they have to um, identify where they are learning from. That's more like you know what I'm saying, like self thought and identifying the upstream. At the same time, we as the receiver, in this example, the people who enjoy the river in front of us, they have to. We have to understand that it is coming from somewhere. It's not like magic that it's coming out of nowhere. And when it comes to the culture, which is continuous from the past, they are always upstream. Upstream is key. And we tend to lose the upstream quite fast. Like we can pass down the information from the kind of th two or three generations ago. I can share the memory with my great parents to my daughter, which is like four generations, right? At the same time, what I tell her as the story it's not exactly the same as the experience i received so when the story passed down on the next generation it changes a little bit it's not exactly the same story as the result it changes so it is quite important to identify this story and at the same time it is very important to leave as is Sorry, leave the story as is, leave the wisdom as is, with the document and <laughs> with the videos. Now people realize that, especially if they think that what they do is ordinary, they don't really think to leave it. Like, you know, we don't really, we don't really leave any documents for what you ate last night. <laughs> I mean, tonight, let's say tonight. What did you eat tonight? If you're living in the East Coast, you may have had a dinner already. Did you eat dinner? Probably you did. Did you eat? Did you write down something you ate and how you ate it? How you clean the dishes? We don't because it's ordinary. I mean, if you're doing it, I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize. But because it's too ordinary, we usually don't do that. But because that ordinary is becoming something very special somewhere else, I am trying to put those ordinary on writing and also the videos but it's it's really difficult to find the those ordinary from the other people because they did not think it would be this far <laughs> well actually it's almost 10 o'clock so i will actually stop here Okay. <laughs> There's one more question left. And I like that question a lot as well. So I will talk about it next week. Not next week, a week after that. And it is about around the prayers and prayers. I don't know about the artistic process much yeah, because I don't consider myself as the artist. Um, but I often define Sashiko as the prayer. It's not even stitching. I define that as the prayer way to pray. So it is quite important for me to talk about the prayer, like what is the prayer and why do I think that a stitching itself is a prayer and I will talk about it, like I did not really answer the question for the dualism yet 
it is not in the middle per se. It's I'm not talking about in between. It, it's kind of outside of A and B. There are there is dualism, yet there is outside of that as well. Ugh. Oh, it's so difficult to explain. Yeah, it is. It, it, I have to. I not have to. I really would like to be able to articulate those explanations. But the point is, I think the other Japanese people also have tried to explain that. Uh, but it's quite difficult to explain over the different language, different culture. So what I can do is pretty much sharing a lot of analogies hoping and wishing that you would stitch the kind of similar way as I do or same way as I do so that we can kind of communicate without the word um, <laughs> it is quite interesting to see people stitching together without any language my mother doesn't speak English but she becomes friend with everybody who I teach so she in the US I I, before COVID, I brought my mom to one of the workshop, and you know they became friends right after that, because they know the same thing. They know the Sashiko's kind of principle. I don't know how they were communicating, but one one good friend of mine right now, she was there, and she took my mom to like shopping or somewhere. I don't remember where, but she, my mom was gone. <laughs> they were like, where, she, where did she go? And one of my friends took her for a walk and shopping. I don't know what they were talking, but you know that that does not. Sometimes we don't need explanation per se, but we do focus on the explanation world because we think there's an answer, but there's not that much answer, correct answers. We are, we have answers, but there is something more than the world. Yep, understanding through the practice. But at the same time, I don't want to kind of escape to that word. Uh, it's not. It's not fair for me to say that you will not be able to understand it without practicing it or without learning how to do it. Uh, it it will help. It will help. At the same time, like it will it means like. Being able to stitch like we do will help to understand what it is. At the same time, it is my responsibility, my mission to explain as much as possible. And your question is always, always appreciated. And those three questions were very, very help helpful for me to uh, structure this live streaming. So if you know my email address, you can send me, you can shoot me the emails, you, you can DM me, or you can even leave the comment on this live streaming. I will try my best to catch up on that. And yeah, that's going to be the main part of this live streaming from now on. If I have a question, I can speak through the one hour live streaming. This used to be like a quiet, silent live streaming like five years ago. So it is difficult to talk through one hour without topic, especially in the foreign language, the second language. So your question is always appreciated. Just don't, don't ask me the question, like technical questions. How do you make stitches even? My answer is going to be, please take my workshop, right? Like, that, that's not the question that I would answer anyway. Okay. One last announcement, which is this announcement I made. I will not be able to offer the live streaming next Thursday night. Next Thursday night, I will be in the North Carolina, uh, Rowley. I will be very busy on Thursday and Friday because of the workshop and lecture I have. I won't be able to go to any uh, quilting exhibition until Saturday morning. I plan to leave <clears throat> Saturday afternoon, or ar around noon for that matter, um, but I will be in the quilt con, like exhibition area before noon of the Saturday 24th, 
So if you like to find me in the Quiltcon, that is probably a good timing. I might do some of the live streaming in the Quiltcon. And in that case, I will go to the Instagram because I don't really know how to do the live streaming on YouTube with my iPhone. Not a phone. I don't use iPhone uh, with my Pixel. So I will probably do that on Instagram. And it might be in Japanese because I don't have like a language switcher there. And that was a request from the Japanese friend who wants to see what Quiltcon looks like. And I think it's okay to... <laughs> I think it's okay to live streaming as long as I do not um, do something crazy. I'll double check the policy. But yeah, um, so I will not be able to do the live streaming next week. But after that, I will go back to the regular routine every Thursday night around 9 o'clock. And I hope that you will enjoy the stitching until that. And after that as well. And for tonight, I hope you have a good night and good sleep. And see you in two weeks here. Have a good night. Bye-bye.